What is up, everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you with a quick video today. Um, so, uh, I, I guess this isn't, um, uh, I, I almost said this isn't a big surprise. I really don't know, but um, if you haven't heard the news, uh, Steve Sarkeesian, the Alabama offensive coordinator, um, was a consideration um, for the job, the coaching job at Colorado, uh, uh, for the head coaching job. Uh, or was it, I, I don't know what it was, but S Steve Sarkeesian was in consideration to work at Colorado, right? Uh, to be the head coach. Well, it was just announced, um, earlier, maybe like an hour ago or so, uh, that he has removed his name from that. He says, I'm not taking it. Uh, so, um, with that being said, th this is the first time in a while that this has happened, um, where both the offense and the defensive coordinators at Alabama will be returning for a second year. Right? So what is it what does this mean for Alabama going into 2020, right? Well, okay, so let's let's start from back in uh January or it was like early this month or whatever. Um Tua declares for the NFL draft, right? He leaves. Now we have um a quarterback battle going on with uh, Mac Jones and uh, uh, Bryce Young. You know, uh, I'll probably get into that a little bit more towards the summer as we head into the 2020 season. We still got a long ways away, but uh, Steve Sarkeesian, of course, was the offensive coordinator last year, calling plays for Tua. He will now be returning to... Uh, Tuscaloosa, or I say returning, he's staying in Tuscaloosa, um, to, uh, coach as the offensive coordinator still, and this is the first time in a while that this has happened, right, I think, who do we have last year, um, uh, not like last year as in this past season, but the year before, we had, uh, Mike Loxley, the head coach at Maryland. That was our offensive coordinator. Tosh LePoy, the defensive coordinator for Alabama. Probably one of the worst we've had. Uh, I don't know what Saban was thinking with that hire. Um, but uh, And Pete Golding honestly didn't do that great of a job last year either, but he's young. And, uh, you know, in your first year, it's not always going to be perfect. Um, a lot of coaches fail in their first year to – get where they want to be, right? They set a goal like, oh, let's get 10 wins. Let's get six wins or whatever. They end up getting like less than half that or something, right? Their first year, something like that. Uh, now, some coaches actually go above and beyond. Uh, but but anyway, uh, offense was just lit up with C Sarkeesian last year. It was lit up with Mike Loxley the year before. Mike Loxley leaves... Uh, to go coach at Maryland, Tosh LePoy leaves as the defensive coordinator. Probably one of the worst Nick Saban has ever hired uh, in Tosh LePoy. Not even sure where the heck he is right now. Going into last season, uh, you know, Alabama coming off a huge disappointment um, from the blowout loss against Clemson. Loxley's out, Tosh LePoy's out. They bring in uh, Steve Sarkeesian and Pete Golding. Pete Golding looked like he was doing really well with the defense at the beginning of the season, but, man, as the weeks went on and everything, against teams like Mississippi State a little bit, Auburn especially, LSU, uh, they just struggled, right? And I don't know how Alabama fans feel, Um you know, listen, Alabama was working with a lot of young players last year on defense. That's really all this was. Um, and, you know, when you have young players and a first-year coach, 
you're going to screw up. You're going to mess up, and it's not going to be where you want it to be. So both the players are learning, and Pete Golding is still learning. And Steve Sarkeesian, he, if you recall, he um, – who did he take over for? I think Lane Kiffin when he left. Lane Kiffin didn't even stay the whole year. Back when we had Jalen Hurts in his freshman year, um, Lane Kiffin was the offensive coordinator up until the final game. He didn't even stay for the championship against Clemson when Clemson beat us the first time. He goes out. Steve Sarkeesian comes in for that one game. He's gone to the Falcons, I think it was. He went to an NFL team, I think the Falcons. And um, so he goes out. Um, you bring in Brian Dable, who was with the Patriots um, for one year. Alabama goes on to win the uh, championship. Um, I think that was the year. I think they actually had... I might be wrong, but I think they had Jeremy Pruitt that year, and then he went to go take the job at Tennessee in 2018. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, but it's it's just been consistent turnover at, uh, with at least the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator for Alabama. So this is the first time in a while that both uh, coaches will be returning. Um, Steve Sarkeesian... Uh, was considered for the Colorado head coaching job. He he takes his name out. Uh, let's see. I uh, so I'm reading this source from AL.com. Steve Sarkeesian has removed his name from consideration for the Colorado head coaching job. Will remain at Alabama as the team's offensive coordinator and will be beginning a raise. That will make one of the nation's highest paid assistant coaches. This is, it says, according to a report from ESPN. That's awesome for Coach Sark. Congratulations. He was also apparently in the mix for the Mississippi State job that for the head coach. Of course, they bring in Mike Loxley. Um, or not Mike Loxley. <laughs> Mike Leach, I'm sorry, from Washington State. He comes in. Uh, what's that guy's name? Joe Moorhead goes out. I'll get into that, too, a little bit later. I want to do something to talk about. Um, like, after the after this season, I want to do a video to talk about first-year head coaches um, for mainly SEC teams because we got quite a few uh, in around the league, and we'll talk about if they were worth the hire or not. But um, anyway, so Coach Sark – Turns down the Colorado job. He's going to stay in Tuscaloosa. Uh, how long that's going to be, I don't know. At the very least, I guess this year. Um, Pete Golding, he wasn't in consideration for really anything. He just kind of came out and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, stay for the, uh, j just to stay. Um, so... So this is a big deal. We don't have to worry about working with new coordinators. Nick Saban doesn't have to worry about any interviews, at least for that. Um, so at, we're going to have the two same coordinators that we had last year. We don't. The players don't have to get used to a new coaching scheme. They might change up some plays, maybe, but it's... It's very rare to see uh, a coach come back on the staff and change completely how they do things unless it was really bad last year, uh, which the defense was at least towards the end of the season for Alabama. Uh, we'll see how all that works out if Pete Golding, who's still young, a, a st still a young coach, um, working with young players. Now those players got experience. Pete Golding has experience with the players, the program, the coaching system, um, and everything like that. We'll see how that works out in 2020. Um, but I think this is a good thing for Alabama. Again, they don't have to try to go out and find a new guy um, for offense or defense, and it's especially hard to get used to a defensive coaching system, a new one, right? Right. Like, anyone can throw a ball, anyone can catch a ball, and 
in football, right? You can call a play like that, right? But, you know, with coverages and stuff, reading the offense on the de- on the defensive side of the ball, you don't got to get used to these new play calls, uh, especially with the fact that we have a lot of young players returning um, for their sophomore year. We Alabama played quite a few freshmen last year. Uh, I think had a couple freshman starters, if I recall. Uh, didn't start – like, they didn't, like, start all freshmen, but they had quite a few. So, but anyway, I just wanted to get on here and give my take on it. I think it's going to be great uh, to have Coach Sark and uh, Coach Golding uh, back in Tuscaloosa next year. Uh, really looking forward to to that. Now, I know Alabama fans, again, probably really not happy with how the defense looked last year. And if you want to blame it on – Peach Golding or young players or whatever, go ahead. But I think, and especially with that Michigan game, you can say whatever you want about Michigan, okay? Look, in a ball game, they only gave up like 17 points. And prior to that, they were giving up like 80 or whatever it was. That's an exaggeration. I know it was like 40-something, but still. So, anyway, I just want to get on here and share my thoughts about Coach Sark and Pete Golding. Um... Uh, returning to Tuscaloosa, we'll see how all that works out um, when it comes time for um, September. Coach Sark may or may not be working with a new quarterback. He worked with Mac Jones, of course. He started a couple games last year. If he doesn't win the starting job and it's Bryce Young, uh, Coach Sark's going to have to work with a young guy, of course. Um, and a, a lot of great talent uh, returning. So offense is going to be lit. We'll see about the defense, uh, see how uh, Pete Golding can do in year two. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to come on here and make this uh, quick video uh, about this and get my thoughts on it. I think it's going to be great. Looking forward to seeing what these guys do in year two under Nick Saban. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, be sure to hit the like, hit the subscribe, comment down below. Any Alabama fans, let me know what your thoughts are on these two coaches, uh, Pete Golding and uh, Steve Sarkeesian, uh, returning to Tuscaloosa. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, until next time, Ballard Sports Media, checking out. Roll Tide.